Okay, electroplating. Well, here's our setup. We're going to electroplate an iron spoon with some silver. So, the first question is, at the silver rod electrode, that's here, is it oxidation or reduction, and does it have a positive or negative charge? Okay, right. They've told us we have a six volt DC supply, but they haven't told us which way round the cell is connected, so we don't know straight away which side is positive or negative. This is how you can work it out. You know that the iron spoon is going to end up getting coated with silver, okay? And there are silver ions in the solution. Okay, in the question, it hasn't told you that it's silver nitrate solution, but with silver electroplating, that's what they use. So I've added that in, okay? The iron doesn't matter. That's the nitrate iron. The important thing is you have silver ions in the solution, okay? And you don't get negative silver ions, do you? You should have noticed that in chemistry, metal ions are always positive, okay? So the silver iron here has a positive charge on it. And like I said, you know that the iron spoon is going to end up getting coated with silver ions or silver atoms. They become atoms. When the iron hits the spoon, it gains an electron and it, you can no longer describe it as an iron at that point. It's a silver atom once it's stuck to the spoon, but it's still an atom there. It's just an atom without an electron or one of its electrons. So it's therefore an ion because it has a charge. What I'm getting at is that it's a metal iron and therefore will have a positive charge and if it's going to get attracted towards the spoon, which you know it is, because the spoon is going to get covered in silver, the spoon must therefore have a negative charge, which means all of this must be negative, okay? So we can deduce that the spoon has to be negative in order to attract the positive metal iron towards it, okay? So therefore, if that side's negative, this side must be positive, Okay, so the silver rod is positively charged, which means if we were to draw in the actual cell, it would be that way round. Okay, good. So, back to the question, at the silver rod electrode is oxidation or, well, firstly, does it have a positive or negative charge? Silver rod, has a positive charge. Okay. And is oxidation or reduction happening here? Well, let's quickly go through how this all works. I've got a video on electroplating which explains this in full. So if you're not 100% sure how electroplating works, watch that video now. But I'll quickly go through it now and we will then deduce whether it's oxidation or reduction happening here. So, you have s silver ions positively charged in solution. They're not chemically bonded to the nitrate iron because in solution these two are free to flow wherever they want. The silver can go wherever it wants and the nitrate can f go wherever it wants. The silver is attracted towards the iron spoon because that's positive and the spoon's negative. Okay. And when it hits the spoon, an electron from the spoon jumps onto the silver ion and turns it into a silver atom. Well, it's all, it, like I said before, it was already an atom, but it's no longer an ion because that electron that it's gained cancels out the positive charge and it's now neutrally charged and you have a silver atom bonded to the spoon. Okay. Over here, atoms of silver are losing electrons into the rod. So an electron leaves that silver, goes into the rod and flows around in this direction, okay? 
And that enters the solution as a silver ion, which just like here, goes over here, sticks to the spoon, gains an electron from the spoon and is a neutrally charged silver atom stuck to the spoon. Okay, so what's going on over here? Atoms of silver are entering solution when an electron from them enters the rod and flows around here. So these atoms are losing electrons. Now is a good time to introduce oil rig. Have you seen that before? It stands for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain of what? Of electrons. Okay, so because this silver atom is losing an electron, oxidation is loss, it's being oxidized. So here, okay, oxidation is happening. Okay, so to actually answer the question, the silver rod electrode is positively charged and the silver atoms are being oxidized. Good. Well, that was a, a long time just to answer the first question, but I wanted to make sure you understand what's going on. But like I say, watch my other video on how electroplating works. Okay, which uses this same diagram. Okay, next question. Silver is deposited on the spoon. What is the half equation? Okay, so it's talking about the half equation of what's going on here. So it's, it's this, when a silver ion hits the spoon, it gains an electron. So a silver ion, that's Ag plus, plus the electron, let's draw the electron in, okay? that jumps onto it, so plus an electron, which has a negative charge, goes to that. Just a silver atom. Okay, positive and negative charges cancel out and the silver atom, once it's stuck to the spoon, is neutral. So that's the half equation. Now, I know in the question they didn't write a little minus next to the E, but I think they should. Get on that Edexcel, okay? It's clearer when you can check that the charges balance and cancel out. And so you won't be marked down if you write a little minus on the E. So I would recommend writing it like that, okay? Good. Next question. The voltage of a cell is 1.5 volts. Give a reason why this voltage of the cell decreases when the cell is left connected in a circuit. Okay. I don't like this question, Edexcel, okay? Because it's not really clear if you're talking about this still. They're not. They suddenly started talking about some general cell in some circuit, okay? And it's a question about why cells, if you just connected that circuit up and left it with this lamp on, why that cell would eventually run down, okay? They just wanted to regurgitate the textbook answer. Now, I've looked at the, um, the specification for this nine to one chemistry, and this is what it says in the specification. Recall that you need to be able to recall that a chemical cell produces a voltage until one of the reactants is used up. Now, it's talking about the reactants inside the cell itself, okay? So just, re it's only one marker's question, just regurgitate that. that. So if you get this question in the exam, firstly, like I say, you have to identify that they're not talking about this. Suddenly they're just talking about a cell. So just say that, we'll just say that, that the chemical cell produces a voltage until one of the reactants is used up. 
okay? So its voltage decreases when one of the reactants is used up. Okay, next question. Duralumin, I've no idea how to pronounce that. Duralumin, duralumin, who knows? Is an alloy of aluminium and copper. The radii of the atoms are, okay. So we have, let's have a change of color. We're told that, okay, this is the radii of the atoms. Aluminium is 1.43 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. And copper is 1.27 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. 10 to the minus 12 is a picometer. Did you know that? So minus 9 is a nanometer, minus 12 is a picometer. So, question. Explain why copper added to aluminium to form the alloy makes the alloy stronger than pure aluminium. Two marks. Okay. Like I always say, you often get marks for these sort of things for saying the obvious. They've given you this. Okay. So what's the obvious thing? That they're getting at here that we should say well we should quite simply say copper atoms are smaller than aluminium atoms okay write out in full sentences write out the word copper and aluminium you okay in your exam i'm, I'm doing it shorthand Right, and we've got one mark straight away. Okay? So, now you just need to use your knowledge because you've been revising. And next you should say, therefore, adding atoms of copper to aluminium disrupts the layers of aluminium. Okay, so how do I summarize that? So, therefore, adding copper to aluminium disrupts the layers. Nothing wrong with a little diagram, okay? So just something quick like this. You've got layers of, that's pure aluminium, they're aluminium atoms, okay? When you add in the copper, then it all goes, I'm just going to use a rude phrase there, it all goes wrong, shall we say. You no longer get these nice layers because it's smaller, that one's up a bit, and so this next one's in a bit, and oh, it's just a mess. So you get the layers disrupted, like we said. Okay, two mark question, try and say three things, and therefore the aluminium layers can't slide over each other. Okay? Pure aluminium is soft because these layers can slide over each other. When you, when you, it's called doping, when you dope it with smaller atoms, it disrupts the layers and they can't slide over. And that makes it stronger. Okay, good. Oh, that, that's the uh, copper. Right, next. The proportion of gold in a piece of jewellery is measured in carats. Pure gold is 24 carats. A nine carat gold ring has a mass of 12 grams. Calculate the mass of gold in the ring. Right, piece of cake. This is 11 year old mathematics. So, no, just got space. So pure gold, All right, is 24 carats, and we have a nine carat gold ring. So ours is nine carats. It's nine carats and it weighs 12 grams. Calculate the mass of gold in the ring. Okay, so our ring 
is a nine carat gold ring. So it's nine carats out of a maximum possible of 24 carats, okay? That's the proportion of pure gold in our ring, okay? So in other words, nine twenty-fourths of our ring is gold. So nine twenty-fourths of, of, translated to math, means times. So nine twenty-fourths of the whole thing, which is 12 grams, that's how much gold there is in our ring, okay? So, nine, that's it. Nine twenty-fourths of our ring is gold. Stick it in the calculator and you get 4.5 grams, okay? Makes sense? I'll just go over that again quickly to make sure it's clear. You can write it down all at once and I would recommend you try and get used to this method. This is suddenly turned into a maths lesson, okay? You can work out the fraction of gold in our ring first, if you like, and do 9 over 24th and then put that in your calculator, calculate that separately, and then multiply that by the mass of the ring. That's fine, but I'd like you to be expert at maths, and it's good if you can get used to doing it all at once, like this, okay? But it's up to you. So 9 24th is the fraction of pure gold in our ring because 24 fourths that's like a 100% pure gold ring. So a maximum of 24 carats. See, pure gold is 24 carats. But ours is a nine carat ring. So nine out of a maximum of 24, that is the fraction of pure gold in our ring. So nine 24 of, in maths, times. Finished.